Hi, uh, thanks for coming to my session. Uh, I'm Akihiro Sada from Software Engineer at NTT. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'd like to ask audiences uh, some questions. Uh, so please raise your hand if you have heard of BuildKit before. Uh, about 50% uh, or 40. Uh, please keep raise your hand if you are already using BuildKit. Uh, not so many. Uh, keep raising your, your hand if you're already running BuildKit on Kubernetes. Nobody? Yeah. Uh, so I hope uh, my talk will be uh, useful for deploying uh, BuildKit on Kubernetes. Uh, so uh, let's look at introduction to BuildKit first. Uh, so BuildKit is a next generation uh, image builder uh, with focus on performance and security. Uh, so for performance, uh, you can uh, build a uh, Docker file with much stages uh, in parallel. And you can also do caching efficiently. And BuildKit also uh, focuses on security. Uh, so you can access to uh, private assets on Amazon S3 or uh, Git repo uh, privately uh, using uh, SSH. And it also supports uh, new syntax uh, that can be replaced uh, Docker file, such as uh, BuildPax. And also uh, BuildKit doesn't require root privileges on the host, so this is very secure. And uh, BuildKit is already included in Docker since version 18.06. But in this talk, I will focus on the standard version of uh, BuildKit. Uh, so BuildKit D, uh, it's a daemon, and the BuildCTL, it's a client. So it doesn't depend on Docker. Uh, so even if uh, you are uh, running your cluster with uh, Cryo, or you are using Podman, uh, you can use uh, BuildKit. Uh, so uh, BuildKit is uh, based on LLB, uh, which is a new uh, intermediate language. Uh, so you can consider LLB is to uh, Docker file what LLBM IR uh, is to C. Uh, so uh, just, just like you compile C to LLBM uh, intermediate code, uh, you can compile Docker file to LLB, or you can use uh, another language that can be compiled to LLB. And LLB has a dark structure, uh, so we can uh, analysis uh, dependency accurately, uh, so we can do uh, casting very efficiently, and we can also uh, do uh, concurrent execution for uh, run instructions in Docker file. And uh, you can use a uh, multi-stage Docker file for uh, describing LLB graph. Uh, so in this example, uh, we have uh, three stages, uh, stage zero, one, and two, and uh, there is a copy instruction between uh, zero, one, and two, and uh, there's another copy instruction between stage one and stage two. Uh, so the graph can be illustrated uh, like this. Uh, so in this graph, uh, stage zero and stage one can be executed in parallel. And here's uh, some benchmark results. Uh, so for this example, uh, without the build kit, it takes uh, more than five minutes. But uh, with build kit, it takes uh, less than three minutes. Uh, so this is uh, two times faster. And when you have a cache, uh, without uh, build kit, it takes uh, 3.6 seconds. But uh, with build kit, it just takes uh, 0 0.5 seconds. So this is uh, 7.2 times faster. And after you modify your source code, oops. After you modify a uh, source code, uh, without build kit, it takes uh, six seconds. And uh, with build kit, uh, it uh, takes two point uh, four seconds. Uh, looks like something is breaking. Uh, yeah, it's uh, two point five times faster. And you can also uh, push your cache to a registry, uh, so you can use uh, Docker build dash dash cache from for using a remote source. Uh, so, uh, but uh, without build kit, the remote cache was uh, not. Uh, very effective, so it takes uh, more than five seconds. But with build kit, it just takes uh, 36 seconds, so this is uh, nine times faster. And build kit also uh, provides a more advanced version of uh, cache. Uh, so it can allow uh, preserving cache of uh, compilers, such as a Go compiler. Uh, so in this uh, example, you can preserve the uh, cache objects uh, created in uh, slash root slash dot cache. You can also, of course, uh, uh, save cache for uh, other 
language compilers. And you can also save uh, cache of apt git uh, that can be uh, presented in uh, slash bar slash cache slash apt. Of course, you can also preserve as a cache like uh, yam or uh, Mabel for Java. Uh, so this is uh, very effective. Uh, so in this example, uh, without build gate, uh, it takes uh, 139 seconds. And even with uh, manual optimization, uh, it takes uh, 41 seconds. And if you enable build gate, uh, it uh, takes uh, 31 seconds. And also, uh, you use uh, run dash dash mount type cache. Uh, it just takes uh, less than four seconds, just 3.9 seconds. Uh, so compared to the uh, uh, legacy Docker build, it's already uh, more than 33 times faster. This is really awesome. And BuildKit uh, also uh, focuses on security, and it has a new instruction called run dash dash mount type uh, secret. Uh, so in this example, you can access to uh, your private S3 buckets uh, from your Docker file uh, securely. Uh, so in Docker file, uh, you specify run uh, mount type secret and specify ID of uh, secret file. Uh, screen has disappeared. It works. Uh, so uh, you can specify the ID of secret file and uh, specify the uh, path for uh, mounting secret, uh, such as uh, slash root slash dot AWS credentials. And in this client, uh, you specify the uh, ID of the secret as well, and you specify the uh, path to the, uh, your credit fi credential file on your client. And in this example, the credential is only visible from uh, run container with mount type secret. So the, a credential is not uh, leaked into the final image. Uh, when uh, I refer to access uh, private repo, uh, some of you might think uh, you can just uh, uh, copy the credential file with a uh, copy instruction, and you can just uh, remove the file with uh, RM command. But please do not do this, uh, because the uh, credential file is uh, still leaked in the intermediate layer tar archive. Uh, so uh, somebody with legal access to your uh, Docker registry can steal your credential. And uh, do not do this uh, either. Uh, so uh, you can uh, inject uh, your credential with uh, Docker build dash dash build dash org, uh, but this is not secure because uh, when you run Docker history commands, you can see uh, your credential showing in your, the output of Docker history command. And BuildKit also has a run dash mount type SSH. Uh, this is similar to mount type secret, but it's uh, specific to SSH. And it can also uh, support uh, passphrase. Uh, so in Docker file, uh, you specify a run dash mount type SSH, and you run a git clone command for uh, some your private git repo. And on client side, you run SSH agent and edit your private key and enter your password on your keyboard. And you can do a build CTL build dash SSH, uh, default equal SSH or SOC. Uh, so uh, it's a, uh, your uh, git command uh, can access uh, your credential with uh, the mounted socket. And uh, build kit uh, also supports new languages uh, instead of Docker file. Uh, there are already uh, three languages so far, uh, build packs and Mocha file and Goka file. You can also uh, create uh, your own language uh, using uh, BuildKit and LLB framework. Uh, one of the new language is uh, build packs. Uh, this was uh, ported from uh, Heroku and Cloud Foundry. And you can uh, de uh, describe uh, your image in YAML uh, like this. Uh, there is also another uh, build box uh, called Crowded Build Box. 
Uh, currently, we don't have support for cross-native build bugs, but I think uh, we can support cross-native build bugs as well uh, easily. And another long way is uh, mocker file. Uh, so you can uh, write uh, your after git in YAML. Uh, so you can specify the uh, repo and specify ZBZ key and specify the packages to be installed uh, like this. And you can also uh, use a Goka file. Uh, this is a similar to Mocha file, but optimized for uh, Golang. This is very simple, so you just need to specify your repo and the path inside the repo and the version of uh, your project. Uh, the next part is how to deploy a uh, build kit on Kubernetes. Uh, so why uh, do we want to uh, build images on Kubernetes? I think there, there are uh, two different kinds of uh, motivation. Uh, the first one is uh, CI, CD. Uh, so uh, in this example, uh, we are running uh, some build kit ports in the cluster, and we have uh, another port that can work as a build kit client. Uh, that can be uh, like a Tecton pipeline, or uh, Jenkins, or just uh, Kubernetes uh, batch job vote. And maybe, maybe uh, we, you can have uh, some webhook for triggering your, your CI CD. Uh, this is a very common pattern. And we, I think it's also uh, useful for uh, developer experience. Uh, so you write uh, your code on your laptop, uh, but uh, compared to your cluster, your laptop is uh, poor uh, with regards to hardware resources such as CPU and memory, so it's not suitable for uh, building images. And you, your Wi-Fi might be flaky, uh, so you cannot uh, build images with a bunch of up to get to install. And uh, when you are working in a cafe or somewhere, uh, you don't have a power supply, so you don't want to build images on your laptop. But uh, using a build kit in Kubernetes, uh, you can migrate uh, your uh, build to cluster. Uh, so you can just use your laptop with poor hardware resource and network and battery. Uh, so uh, previously, uh, to build images on Kubernetes, uh, the common pattern was to run Docker client and port uh, with a uh, blind amount of volume for uh, slash bar slash run slash docker.soc, uh, docker API socket. Or another pattern was to run uh, docker dint, uh, docker in docker container with uh, security context dot privileged. Uh, but uh, apparently uh, both are insecure. Uh, so if uh, your port got compromised, the attacker can gain uh, root privilege on the host very easily because the attacker can now run uh, docker dash dash uh, privileged. Uh, so our solution is the uh, rootless mode, uh, which means uh, running a uh, build kit daemon as a, a non root user on the host. And also, you don't need to specify any extra uh, security context configuration like uh, security context got privileged. Uh, so, even if uh, BuildKit has some vulnerability, uh, you can protect your host. Here's some demo. So, uh, I run Kubra. CTL get pods. And uh, country uh, name, uh, port uh, with uh, name BK is running on my cluster. And in this port, I'm running everything as a non root user uh, named uh, user with uh, UID, with UID. 10000. This is not root. And you can build the image with a uh, build CTL command. You can specify the address to uh, cube uh, dash port colon slash slash bk, uh, which is the name of this port. So uh, we can build an image like this. I mean, in this case, uh, this uh, finished uh, just less than five seconds because we have cache. 
and uh, we can run uh, APK commands uh, for installing packages uh, without root privileges. And inside the container, uh, you can gain uh, some uh, fake root, uh, so you can run any package manager such as apt-get or uh, dnf or uh, whatever. Uh, so in this example, I installed a figurate command, and I create a file uh, named out uh, with uh, some figurate uh, output. So it works. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of uh, confusion and misunderstanding uh, around the rootless mode. Uh, one of the uh, misunderstandings is that it requires uh, security conditions not privileged. Actually, uh, it was true until uh, Bildkit version 0.4, but in the latest version of Bildkit, you don't need security context privilege. But uh, you need to disable uh, process sandbox, uh, which means uh, ensuring a PID namespace and uh, mount proc FS for uh, containers uh, used for uh, run instructions. Uh, this is not for uh, the Bildkit container itself. Uh, so to illustrate this, uh, we need to uh, disable process sandbox for containers for run instruction, but uh, we still have process sandbox for the daemon. Uh, so uh, worker container can uh, kill the daemon, but it cannot uh, kill the uh, process on the host. Uh, so, so the host is still protected, so you don't need to uh, worry too much. Uh, but if you want to enable process sandbox, uh, you need to specify uh, security context dot proc mount, but anyway, you don't need to specify uh, dot privileged. And another myth was that you need to set comp and up armor, you need to disable that. Uh, actually, this is not a myth at the moment, uh, because, uh, but this is not a problem because set comp is typically disabled by default on Kubernetes and up armor as well uh, sometimes. Uh, so uh, you need to disable second for ability to daemon, but you can still enable uh, second for uh, worker containers who run instructions. Uh, so the uh, worker containers are still protected, so you don't need to worry, worry uh, too much about this either. And in future, uh, we, we are considering uh, support second and upper armor using uh, GVisor. It's another Linux kernel implementation in user space by Google. And uh, we have a project based on uh, GVisor. It's uh, Buzor, uh, it's a Russian word, it's not B3 or P, it's Buzor. Uh, it's a GVisor based sandbox project uh, that can be nested in inside uh, Rancy containers. Uh, so with uh, Buzor and Rancy, you don't need to disable SecComp and Aperma for Rancy. And we can also uh, mitigate potential vulnerability in the kernel uh, because we, we can intercept all system calls uh, using uh, Brazil. But currently, uh, it doesn't work at this moment because uh, GVisor doesn't implement all Linux system calls. And we are also uh, rooting into possibility of uh, using uh, user mode Linux. Uh, this is similar to GVisor, but it's already uh, 20 years old and provides almost full compatibility with Linux. Uh, this is uh, kind of uh, being forgotten, but it, it's still alive. And uh, there is also a project uh, similar to Rootless Builder Kit. Uh, it's Kaniko, but it's different. So uh, Kaniko runs as the root user, but it's unprivileged. Uh, so you don't need to disable SecComp and Aparma uh, so there are uh, some differences, and Kaniko might be able to mitigate some vulnerability that uh, Rootless Build Kit cannot mitigate, and vice versa. Uh, so if uh, there is there has uh, some vulnerability in kernel, uh, Build Kit might be weak, and uh, Kaniko might uh, mitigate that. But if you had vulnerability in Rancy, uh, Kaniko might be weak. The next topic is uh, how to uh, deploy. Uh, so there are a bunch of uh, plans such as deployment, demo set, seed full set, or uh, job. Uh, typical uh, plan is to use uh, Kubernetes deployment, but you can also uh, choose uh, using demo set. 
it's better with regard to the port placement because uh, you can guarantee uh, each, of node, each of the nodes has uh, exactly one port. But it's not always optimal because it's unlikely to hit the daemon local cache. I mean, the cache is a built daemon if you have a bunch of uh, nodes. Uh, so if your cluster is large and your Docker file is complex, uh, daemon set might be not be optimal. And you can also use a uh, stateful set and you can make port names uh, consistent. Uh, this is co uh, good for uh, consistent hashing. I will, I will discuss this topic later. And you can also deploy a build kit as a job. I call it a daemon response. Uh, so you can deploy a Visual CTL client and build the daemon in a, a single container in an ephemeral port. Uh, so you don't need to manage the life cycle of the daemon. And, you are, and when your uh, build request exited, uh, the daemon uh, exits as well. And for connecting to uh, build kit the daemons, uh, the build kit daemon can rest on TCP, and you can uh, build and push in, in just a single gRPC connection. Uh, so you can create a Kubernetes service for connecting build kit ports, uh, maybe in deployment or daemon set or in uh, stateful set. Uh, that's like this. And you don't need uh, real, uh, real uh, road balancer. You, you can just use headless service uh, with DNS round robin. And actually, you don't necessarily need to create service uh, because uh, Visual CTL CLI can directly connect to a daemon in a pod uh, without service. It's implemented by uh, using kubectl exec. Uh, this is good uh, when you are uh, watching your project on your laptop and you can uh, use uh, build kit in your cluster from your laptop easily. That's like this. Uh, so you can create a port uh, with kubectl run, and you specify a uh, build kit host environment variable to kube dash port colon slash slash bk, and you can run build city client. And we also plan to add Kubernetes support for uh, Docker build X. Uh, it's the uh, next generation CLI for integrating a uh, build kit to Docker. And it has a bunch of interesting features, like uh, building much architecture images with uh, remote LM machines. It also has a new uh, concept. It's called the BIG. Uh, it's uh, something similar to Docker Compose build. And uh, Docker build X uh, will support connecting to build the daemons running on Kubernetes in the same UX as uh, Docker. The next part is uh, caching. Uh, so you can uh, push uh, your cache to a registry, or you can also use uh, some shared file system like NFS for sharing your cache with other basic instances. The registry cache is uh, very similar to a classic Docker build dash cache dash from, but it provides a more chance of hitting cache. And we have also uh, support for shared file system. This is good uh, when you are building something that is not a container and you don't have registry. Uh, this is uh, still valid use case for build kit. Uh, so that can be uh, like this. Uh, you can use registry as the cache storage as well as uh, final image storage. But uh, remote cache might be slow compared to the uh, daemon local cache. Uh, so for example, uh, from I, what I shown is a part one, uh, without cache, uh, it took uh, two minutes and 50, 50 seconds. And with remote cache, you can build uh, this image in 36 seconds. But this is still slow compared to the daemon local cache, uh, which just takes uh, less than a second. Uh, so you can also consider using a consistent hashing mode uh, so you can stick your build requests to a specific point, pod in a stateful set. Uh, so your build request can always hit uh, a daemon local cache in the pod. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, circular hashing space, and we apply the same hashing function to uh, pod names and Docker file names. 
Uh, so we can uh, assign Docker files to the port in uh, such a clockwise order. Uh, so the bibliotech D0 has buzz Docker file, and bibliotech D1 has Qux Docker file, bibliotech D2 has a uh, bar Docker file, bibliotech D3 has a uh, full Docker file. And even if uh, bibliotech D3 has crashed, uh, bibliotech D0 uh, can take over uh, the full Docker file uh, like this. And if uh, we have uh, some new Docker file, uh, it can be assigned to somewhere in this circular hashing space. Uh, in this example, build kit D2 will handle uh, uh, the new Docker file, uh, QX Docker file. Uh, but uh, conscious hashing is not panacea uh, because uh, IO overhead uh, may uh, concentrate, concentrate on a specific set of nodes. And uh, some nodes might not be used at all. Uh, so uh, if your uh, cache registry is fast enough for your Docker file, uh, I suggest uh, using a remote cache uh, with some load balancing. But uh, if uh, your registry is slow or your Docker file is, is uh, very complex, you can consider using a consistent hashing and you can avoid uh, transferring cache. Uh, the last topic is uh, CRD. Uh, so we, with CRD, uh, we can use YAML for everything. And so uh, we can use uh, Kubernetes API for the uh, entire workflow. And uh, uh, some uh, CRD projects uh, for uh, building images. Uh, the first project was a uh, container builder interface, uh, CBI. And this, uh, this project uh, had supported a bunch of uh, image builders such as uh, BuildKit, and it also supported uh, Canico or Google Cloud Control Builder and OpenShift SQL and a uh, lot of other builders. But uh, it had a very complex design with a uh, lot of microservices, and it failed, and it's now being deprecated. The second project is uh, Knative Build. It's simpler than CBA and easily extensible, uh, but uh, there is also uh, another project, uh, Tecton, uh, which is spun out from uh, Knative. It's much more simple and extensible, and it looks like uh, Tecton may uh, replace the uh, build component of uh, Knative. Uh, so uh, with Tecton, uh, you can uh, create a new object called task run, and you can specify the uh, uh, build kit as a task. You can also specify other image builder tasks, such as uh, Builder from Red Hat, or Canico from Google, uh, and uh, Max from uh, Uber. And you can specify SSH credential in the secret, and you can specify uh, your Git repo uh, like this. It's called resources. And the secret is uh, associated with the service account. And uh, similarly, you can also specify the uh, registry like this, and you can specify the registry credential in the secret associated with the service account. And that's all of uh, my talk. Uh, to wrap up, uh, build kit is fast and secure, and it has uh, some several deployment plans uh, with a daemon or uh, without daemon. Uh, if uh, you uh, deploy build kit, build kit as a daemon, uh, for example, you can deploy like this. Uh, so you have a daemon set, and you have headless service, and you have built the client uh, that can be managed by uh, Tecton pipeline. And uh, we need uh, more contributors. Uh, so if you are interested in contributing to build kit, uh, please join us. Uh, our GitHub repo is uh, github.com slash mobile slash build kit. Thanks.